Hello, this is Bob McClellan. This is the second of three screencasts about Presentation Builder. In this part, I will show the details of how slides are copied along with the correct layout, master, and theme parts. It is essential that you watch part one of this series first. I will be showing detailed c -sharp code that uses the Open XML SDK. Now I'm going to move on to showing the main part of Presentation Builder, which is the interrelationship between the master, the layouts, I haven't talked about layouts yet, but the master, the layouts, and the slides, and that also includes the theme. These four parts are always going to be present in every presentation and part of every slide, and so they are the core part of Presentation Builder. Now, that said, all these other interrelated pieces also have to copy correctly or it or it won't be correct. But I'm going to focus first on showing those pieces and then in part three of this series I will go into the details about the other sort of optional parts that can be related to a slide and show how those are all handled in the code. So I'm going to be kind of skipping over those other parts as I look at these main ones. So I'm going to review first how those four parts are related. If I start with a slide, I can see that every slide has a reference to a layout. And those layouts are all, you know, there's a separate part for each layout, but the layouts all refer to their master because every layout has to be part of a master. Every master that I have seen has exactly 11 layouts. I don't think that's necessarily the case because uh, it doesn't look like it's a requirement that uh, pow that PowerPoint, for example, would need in order to load the slide, but that's all what I've always seen. Then the master also has a reference the other way. It, all, it has a list of all the layouts, which it refers to explicitly and also a uh, relationship to the theme. Now what's interesting, that's the general layout. It master refers to theme and has a list of layouts. The layouts all have a relationship back to the master and then the slides just refer to the layout. So the the master that goes with the slide is indirectly connected through its layout. What's what, there's a couple interesting things here though. First of all, the theme, I'm going to open this up here, the, the theme has a name attribute that you can see right at the top here. And that name is actually considered to be the name of the master as well. The, at least this is the way that Presentation Builder handles it. Is It looks at that name to determine whether or not we're looking at the same master. Now, of course, it could be possible for someone to create their own master with the same name as someone else's, but this turns out to be a highly reliable method, especially if you're dealing with presentations that are built off, uh, that, that only use the built-in uh, masters from PowerPoint, for example. So it's important to know that it is using that name to determine which masters are the same. The next interesting fact, at least to me, is that each of these layouts also have names. You can see right here it says this name is title slide. And as it turns out, the built-in masters for PowerPoint, I, in general, all the layouts have the same set of names. So there'll be a title slide layout and a and let's just take 10, and this one will be title and vertical text. And so those names are all the same. So that makes it easy when we're changing masters to figure out which layout to use from a different master. And this is exactly how PowerPoint handles copying slides from a different master, like on a copy and paste operation. It uses the layout name in order to determine which one to use for the new slide that may have come from a dis different master. And then, so then in the code itself, 
here. So I'm going to show there are two methods for actually building the presentation. The first one specifies a file name and then the output goes directly to that file name. The second one creates an in-memory result, resulting document, uh, and then you can save that yourself or do whatever other manipulation you might want to do with that document. The first one I think is uh, going to be the most commonly used. These both call this uh, private method to actually do the building from the sources. And this first table here with the that sets up the dictionary for the relationship markup, that has a lot to do with the other references I'm going to cover in part three. So I'm going to just skip over that for now. And also this images list is part of that too. So again, I'm just going to skip over that. So at the beginning, uh, I should go back here briefly. Notice that in this first method, and both methods, I start by creating a new presentation document that is empty, has no slides, no masters in it. And so that new one is being used, uh, going to be built on, it's going to be added to as, as the slides are copied from the other parts. So the beginning of this is really just setting up that uh, everything in order to start copying slides. And the, the most important code in this area is this loop that's going to go through all the sources and copy slides. And, and it does that by calling another method to, do, to actually append the slides. The one thing that one other thing that's important here is this if source num equals zero. That is done only the first time through the loop when the when it's on the first source. And that's to make sure that there uh, some other parts are copied from that first presentation. So those are, uh, I'll, I'll touch on those briefly. But otherwise, it's this append slides is the uh, part that's going to actually copy all the slides over. And then this little loop at the end where it's doing the get all parts, that's just to make sure that all the in-memory uh, X documents are actually stored into the document. They're, they're um, written, streamed back out into the, the destination document or the output document. The copy presentation parts is just going through and looking to see uh, if it needs to uh, copy the elements for the slide and note slide sizes that are in the presentation part and then it looks for handout and notes masters because those are really completely independent of any of the slides and copies those if they exist and then there's also a couple of other parts that are only part of the presentation which are the presentation properties and the view properties and so all this is doing is copying over uh, any parts that uh, are coming that, that are based on the presentation only and have nothing to do with the slides. Then this is the real heart of it, the append slides. And it starts by making sure that there is a slide list in the new presentation because there won't be. It's not required to be there in the, ba in the minimal presentation document. So it's going to make sure that that exists first because it knows it's going to add some slides to it. Then the next thing it does is figure out what the next slide ID is going to be. This ID starts at 256. That's why the, it, the new ID is initialized to 256 because if it doesn't find any in there then that's the one it will start with if there are no slides currently. And it starts at 256 simply because that is how presentation documents are defined. The slides can't be, the IDs can't be any lower than 256. So it starts with that value. Once it's figured out what the ID of the slide is going to be, it then starts going through the list, or at least the ID of the first slide in this particular group. Because if we look back at the beginning here, we have the start and the count. So it knows it's going to go through all those. And so that's what this while loop is doing. It's getting set up to actually go through each of the slides in the source, in, the, in one source. And so the slide part, slide right there, is getting the next one. 
and it's using start, which will be incremented down at the bottom of the loop, uh, for which element it picks, which slide it's picking out of there. And I'm going to slide, just slide over here a little bit so you can see it's just looking for the value out of that list so it knows which part to get as that first slide, or the starting slide. Then it's going to look and see if there's no master, or if we're keeping the master, then it's going to copy it. So if there is no master, it has to copy it. This is what I said, why I said that that first slide is going to always copy its master regardless, because if, if there is no master, it has to. Otherwise, it only copies it if it's told to keep it. Now, this copy master is not necessarily going to copy. We'll look at that in a minute. It's going to copy it only if it's not already in the destination. So, but I'll come back to that later. Then the next step is to actually create the new slide and copy everything over from the original. Then these next few here, the add relationships, copy related parts, copy table styles, those are handling all those other optional things I was talking about before that might need to be copied because they're part of that slide. And then uh, the notes slide part is another one of those optional ones. Again, I'll talk about that in more detail later. But then we get to the layout. And so here it's going to get the name of the old layout part and then look through and see if it can find it in the current master part or which master that slide is going to be connected to. And if it does, does find it, then it puts that reference in. If it doesn't, if, and so that new slide, slide layout part is null after the loop, if it hasn't found the layout, then it's just going to pick the first one out of the master because it's been unable to identify it. Now, you might want to modify this in your own case so that if it doesn't find it, that it throws an exception, for example. But I chose to just pull one so that it would do something, you know, end up with some kind of resulting uh, document rather than throwing an exception. And then there's another one of these related pieces that's optional, which is the slide comments part. I'm not going to talk about that right now. And then at the very end here, it's creating a new entry in the slide list in the presentation part so that that slide is now uh, referenced as it needs to be. And that concludes the whole copying of the slide. Looks pretty easy when we just kind of skimp over a lot of the <laughs> other methods. So, uh, and then it returns this master part so that it, it maintains that current master part across each of the source copies. It's just a simple way of keeping track of which master should be used if it's not being copied. So let's look at the copy master slide. And this one's pretty interesting. So the first thing I do is search through and see if there's an existing master slide with the same theme name as I said before. So I'm digging down into the theme, looking through and seeing if there's one there. And if there is, then I just return it because it already exists in the destination or output document. If it doesn't, then it's got to be copied. And I do that by creating a new master and putting all the pieces together. And those are, first, I have to create a new ID for the slide master list in the presentation. And this ID is required to be that value, the 2147483648, at the minimum. So if there are no masters in there, then that's the ID it will get. Otherwise, it will pick an ID that is higher than that, but not one higher than that, because masters work differently. Our, their IDs from masters are also have to be unique. Uh, let me explain this a little differently. If I look at the customer content, and I see in the master list, here's that ID I was talking about, the big long ID. And then I go and look at the master itself.
and I look here and find the layouts, I can see that the layout is using the next ID. So 648, just to show you, then 649, 650, all the way through. So these IDs, the in a sense, the master IDs and the layout IDs are shared. So you, a master cannot have the same ID as any of the layouts and vice versa. So in this code, I actually, if I find the max ID, I then have to go into that master that matches that max and find all the layout IDs and make sure or at least get the, you know, make sure that that uh, new ID is past all those uh, layout IDs. And so it's a little more complicated, but the, all this code is just getting the right ID, and then I can add that new master element in there. And then I increment this ID because I'm going to need them when I copy the layouts. <laughs> I'm going to keep using that unique ID or maximum ID for the layout parts. And then, of course, I have to put the theme, copy the theme over, and uh, that's what's happening in this next block right here. Again, you see this copy-related parts. That does, that's the same thing where themes can have references to other pieces. And then I go through each layout and copy those. And, and again, when we copy the layouts, you can see the add relationships, copy-related parts. So again, that's, this is all handling that interrelated markup. Um, there's a lot of interconnecting of ref relationships, like the new layout gets the add part of the master so that it has a relationship to the master. The master is getting a relationship to the layout as well by getting it, and it's explicit so the entry is created for that and so on. So that's what's happening here. They're being copied, entries are being set up, and all that's being written out into the destination. Let's review. The copy master slide is copying the theme, master, and layouts. The slide copies are picking up their layouts from the current master, and that covers all the relationships that need to be done. What I want to make note of is how names are used to compare, names of themes are used to compare the masters, and how these unique IDs have to be created with just the right values for the slides in one group and the masters and layouts in another group. So that is the essence of the slide copies. And notice how just this one little check right here of the keep master determines whether or not that master needs to be copied and then everything else just falls into place whether it's been copied or not. It knows that uses that current master part variable to determine which one it should be getting its layouts from. So if you tell it to keep the master, it's got a that current master part is a copy of its original master, but it still has to set up relationships to the copied layouts by name. So it all works out the same either way, whether you copy them or not. I hope that makes sense. In part three, as I said, I'm going to go into some of these other uh, relationships that can be there. And specifically, I'm going to look at comments. I'm going to look at briefly at the table styles because they're pretty straightforward. There's not really too much to them. But then there's some other related parts that, uh, like audio parts, video parts, chart. I'm going to look at that chart part that I showed before, embedded objects, images in particular, and how uh, the presentation builder avoids copying, duplicate, you know, making more than one copy of the same image, even if they come from different source documents. So stay tuned so to speak.